Yeah, I mean, I'm on Google Earth any time that I've got a few extra minutes to, to spare. Eating breakfast in the morning, killing time at night. I have a bit of a GPS in my head, I think, from staring at these maps for so many bloody hours. And really helps to build a picture of where everything is. So old growth um, looks quite different than second growth forest from the satellite image. Old growth looks a lot scruffier. It has a lot of these dark shadows here. Versus the younger forest, the second growth tree plantations, is this light green, very uniform looking forest that often has roads going through it. And you can see the transition quite clearly in a lot of places here between old growth and second growth and old growth here again in younger forest. Right here and that really helps you target the places that you're going to go exploring looking for big trees it's most useful really for me um, to identify areas of old growth forests across vancouver island and also see where there is new clear-cut logging it doesn't replace actually just going out there and looking for yourself with your own eyes but um, this can definitely save you a lot of time in driving back roads if you can uh, focus your explorations that much better with it. I think about trees all the time. I don't really feel like I have a choice in, in my interests. I, I read about trees, I take pictures of trees, I dream about trees. I would be the happiest person ever if I found the biggest tree in the country. Hey, Candace TJ calling. Good, good. I'm just getting ready to go here, taking off to Port Renfrew, and uh, gonna explore around a bit on Edinburgh Mountain. So, wondering if you wanna meet me up there maybe tomorrow or the next day? Sounds good. See you later. Bye. Port Renfrew is awesome. It's kind of got its own unique flavor. It's a small town, only a population of a few hundred, known now as the tall tree capital of Canada. It's one of the last places that's still like relatively easy to get to, but where you feel like you're at the end of the road. The biggest thing preventing people from finding record-breaking trees is that the majority of the record-breaking trees have been cut down. Around Port Renfrew, you've got a lot of the largest trees in all of Canada. The world's largest Douglas fir, the Red Creek fir, San Juan spruce, one of the country's largest spruce trees, Big Lonely Doug. And if you're going to find a new record-sized tree, it's going to be in one of these valleys on southern Vancouver Island. Never-ending bump. Sometimes on these roads, I feel like the car is gonna do like that Flintstone scene where every part just falls away and you're left sitting on the road holding the steering wheel. So Edinburgh Mountain is pretty much the largest contiguous tract of old growth forest on, left on southern Vancouver Island outside of a park. We're like half an hour from Port Renfrew. Yeah, this would be a spot that I'd love to fly the drone down. The tallest trees almost always stick up above the forest around them, so um, this really cuts the time down. See how close we can get. Wow. It, amazing view of the whole side of the mountain here. And, and yeah, you can definitely see the tops of Pretty large Douglas fir trees sticking out and the candelabra tops of many red cedars. So looks like a worthwhile place to hike into. Yeah, I think we're in for a, a treat tomorrow. <laughs> If you look at the Sitka spruce and the Douglas fir and the, the redwoods uh, and the cedars from the west coast of North America, they have the ability to grow taller and bigger around than any other tree species on earth. Uh, on the valley walls, the water drains down to the valley bottom where the creek is. 
You've got a lot of water and nutrients draining down to the valley bottom. It's got very distinctive soils, and they tend to be the best growing sites that we have for trees in British Columbia. The biggest trees are still out there waiting to be discovered. And that's one of the things that drives the big tree hunters, is they know that these trees are out there, and it's just a matter of finding them. Starting in the 1980s, a legendary big tree hunter named Randy Stoltman, he began recording where the biggest trees for each of our native tree species were uh, on the coast of British Columbia. So here we've got the original paper records for the big tree uh, registry, and uh, the really big trees tend to have names, uh, you know, like the Red Creek fir. It's an interesting incentive for people because that, that ability to name a tree is it's something that people can connect with by, by naming it. Since we're seeing top, top 10 trees still come in and even champion trees come in, the, the big tree hunters really feel like the big ones are still out there. So it used to be that the uh, big tree hunters were mainly interested in that the registry would have the top 10 of each species. So there was this champions list. What's the biggest? What are the 10 biggest? But if there's a locally particularly big tree that people want to nominate, there's no reason why we shouldn't be accumulating the 20th biggest, the 30th biggest, the 40th biggest kind of thing. And because we're keeping this data digitally and we can search for it, we can sort, creates a bigger database to just keep track of how these old trees are doing. So when we list big trees on our registry, uh, there is no protection conferred by that. Uh, they just, it's just a list. But people have taken uh, the list and used it in campaigns to try and save some of these trees, some of these groves of trees, and sometimes valleys. The oldest tree that we found in British Columbia so far is about 1,850 years old, and it's a stump. You know, when you have uh, a landscape that's very diverse from higher steep rugged terrain to valley bottoms, what would have been carpeted in ancient forests at one time uh, now essentially is a patchwork of tree plantations, clear cuts, and a few strands of old growth forests. It's trying to, it's sort of like trying to locate a herd of rhinos um, in this very uh, sporadic, rare thing now over the landscape. The only thing I've done for the last 25 years, if you think of a, uh, I don't know how 25 years went by in that time, but from the time I was 17 until now, I've spent almost all my time working to save old growth forests. It's the land of the giants here. It's frustrating because we keep on coming to areas that we checked out online on Google Earth and through the old growth maps that we have. Once we go there to ground truth it, they're big stumps and clear cuts. This is happening again and again and again. The biggest I've seen in here so far. And from this vantage point, it's almost like a work of art. Like the way it corkscrews up into the sky, and it's unbelievable. Let's take a look. Thirty feet six inches. Thirty point six. Yeah, it's about ten feet um, in diameter. I'm not complaining. Yeah. Ten foot wide tree is pretty dangerous. Yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> wow. Well, there's a number of giant cedars through here. One of the biggest concentrations we've seen on on Edinburgh Mountain, really. And there's a Douglas fir, 
just down near the creek here that we've got to get a height measurement on because it's one of the tallest I think we've ever seen. It'd be great to get a climber up in one of these trees and uh, next week I think we'll get up in one of these cedars. Well, my family actually has a business in Port Renfrew. They run the Port Renfrew Fishing Marina and RV Park right on the Gordon River. So I feel like I have a very deep connection and care and respect for the town, and I only want the best for it. I think Reed, I just saw Reed go and get his trailer, so he was going to go out there. Since the logging has quit, it's basically been sports fishing that's kept this community alive for the summers. And now with this interest in the big trees, it's 12 months a year and it brings a whole different type of person into Port Renfrew rather than the fellow that's just here to fish for two days and drink beer. You got people that are here and have a genuine interest in nature. So that's it, day of the life of the marina. This is it. I would say at least once a day through this summer, someone's come in to get gas or whatever and asked where Avatar Grove is. Like it's really increased tourism. It's increased business for us as far as drop-ins, you know, for camping or gas. I mean, that was an area that I stumbled upon in 2009. Took Ken to show him the area. We built a campaign around it. We started bringing hundreds of, if not thousands of people out in the woods to see the Avatar Grove. And sure enough, in February 2012, the Avatar Grove was saved. People would all over the world would be attracted to come and see a place like this. It's, it's world class. Lots of people would like to save the world and he's actually saved a little piece of it, which is pretty unique, I think. Old growth forests attract people from all over the globe. You know, people will fly all the way from Europe specifically to see the ancient landscapes, especially around Port Renfrew. That shows just how valuable a resource we have here, not necessarily only in timber, but for ecotourism. The third of a series of storms have hit Port Renfrew. A lot of wind and a ton of rain, and as you can see, we've got about 15 trees down across the line, so. When you're in Renfrew and this happens, you're essentially cut off from civilization. Look at that guy. <laughs> Gonna have to free my parents. They're three here still. Oh, there's my dad. I guess we're still going out there just to look around. We've got to do something. Everyone's here. Yeah, Matt's got a saw. Should probably catch up with them. But I just wanted to tell you that we're alive and well. It's one of those days where you're happy you pack your sunscreen and your towel. Oh my God. The guardrail's smashed, man. Weather-wise, like, what do you need? To to me, it's a, is this manageable? Wind is definitely the, the worst thing. Yeah, and that um, seems to have died down, so. Yeah. Hopefully all good there. Fairly fairly doable. On three? Yep. Okay, one, one two, two, three. Oh, oh, we, it did we both do rock there? Yeah, or? I think or, we did, yeah. Okay, so on three we do On it, three, right? yep. So one, two, three. One, two, three. Dang it! Oh, okay, got it. <laughs> Wait, who if who loses goes first? Is that no? Who wins this? <laughs> sure, yeah. I'll take I'll take a couple shots. You go for it. We'll see how it goes. Elbow <laughs> baggage at your service. Great. Hold bail open. Bail is open. Oh, that went nowhere. Yeah, dang it. <laughs> kind of gauging how much we want to pull on the actual slingshot, and he didn't have enough. Ready on the reel? Reel's ready. Yeah, yeah. Is that into it? Yeah. Clean bridge. Closer in. I knew it. This is a huge Douglas fir, and they're super rare today. You know, we have about 1% of the old growth Douglas firs left on BC's coast, so this one's probably nine, maybe, yeah, probably about nine feet wide, I'd say. And looks like it's over 200 feet tall, so. We gotta, what we'll do now is send a, a brighter line up to check it out. So we're basically replacing lines. So we, we'll be putting this throw line up to see if we can trace it, to see if it's over a stable limb. Bad news. I didn't know how far we 
her from the ground, so I was just letting it run and it just shot out the bag. I think we might just have to shoot again. Well, sometimes you could shoot for, I mean, it could be the first shot or it could be, I mean, I've literally had times where it, you didn't, I mean, it took half a day or more and you ended up having to bail and come back the next day just to get the line in the tree, so. Stay close! Fire! Dang it! At this point, it's getting the game, getting the damn tree. Yeah. Do you guys know if it's going to rain today? Well, it holds, that's good. Should be good. Yeah, it looks good. Look good, feel good. In the end, we're global citizens and the ancient forests of BC have an importance for all. This is uh, one of the most spectacular and important and beautiful natural regions of planet Earth. Yeah, this might be number four. Hey. Um, I've been up the San Juan spruce, Big Lonely Duck, and the tallest, thickest spruce in the Stoltman Grove. Don't mess with the little trees. <laughs> you know, the first step to conserving something is knowing it's there. So I think that it's really important that we, that we know what's there. Well, I'm absolutely convinced that the biggest trees in the province aren't on the register yet. And it's just a matter of finding them. We've only got a few of these spots left around Port Renfrew, a few of these magnificent old growth forests that people can actually access and visit. Like, this is the future of this town, and you've got to save what remains there. Otherwise, you're just throwing away your future. Yeah, so we're, we're definitely uh, the first people to be in the top of this tree. Our guess was really close. We guessed about 200 feet tall and about nine feet wide, and it was 205 feet tall and nine feet wide, which might be the third largest Douglas fir in the Port Renfrew area. Oh, absolutely, there's a record breaker out there. <laughs> I'm gonna find the biggest tree in the country one day. That sense of mystery and wonder is really what keeps me inspired in life and wanting to keep moving forward. Because this is what came down to the ground here. Yeah, there's there is a knot here. Oh, okay. oh you made a knot. Wait, is that the knot I made or the one no, you just made? No, this one I just made. Okay. Okay. Teamwork. Ah, God. That's a hook right there. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll reel it okay. in and then we'll just do the same thing, eh? It's the 195.2 yeah. scratch. There was 10 feet at the top of the tree that we couldn't quite get to above Damien. So you add that on, that make it 205 feet. All yeah. right. It's a close one, man. Nice. Yeah. It's a high ranker. It felt 200 feet in the air. Oh, it sure did.